Hi, Gigi from the RBA. This video is part of our series on monetary policy. In it, we're going to talk about monetary policy transmission. Let's check in with our roadmap. Over the past few videos, we've talked about monetary policy tools and interest rates. If you haven't already, I suggest you watch these videos. This means we've actually already talked about the first step of monetary policy transmission. This is how the RBA uses monetary policy tools to influence different interest rates in the economy. This includes borrowing rates for households and businesses, interest rates on savings accounts, and yields on many assets. The next few videos will talk about the second step of monetary policy transmission, how changes in interest rates affect the behaviour of households, businesses, and governments in Australia and overseas, and as a result, the performance of Australia's economy. When we think about how changes in interest rates affect the behaviour of households, businesses and governments, we usually talk about different channels of transmission. We call these the saving and investment channel, the cash flow channel, the asset prices and wealth channel, and the exchange rate channel. In this video, we will discuss these channels and how they lead to changes in aggregate demand and GDP, using the example of a decrease in interest rates. Of course, all else being equal, an increase in interest rates is expected to have the opposite effect. In the next video, we'll discuss how changes in aggregate demand flow through to other indicators of performance in the Australian economy, like employment and inflation, and also some other important considerations for monetary policy transmission. So first up is the savings and investment channel. In our introductory video on interest rates, we discussed how interest rates measure the opportunity cost of spending our money today. If interest rates are lower, we might be more likely to spend our money today rather than saving it until some point in the future. With lower interest rates, it also becomes cheaper for us to borrow money to spend, which we can pay back later with interest. So one way that interest rates affect the economy is by influencing decisions about saving, borrowing and spending money. For example, lower deposit rates reduce the incentive for households to save their money. Instead of saving some of their money, they may instead choose to spend it on goods and services. In our aggregate demand equation, this would increase consumption. In addition, lower lending rates can encourage households to increase their borrowing. This is because they'll face lower loan repayments and as a result can afford to borrow more. This can also increase consumption. For example, households could borrow to purchase a new car or perhaps some new furniture for their home. If households can borrow more, they are also able to afford to buy more and or better housing. This can support demand for housing, which increases in investment in building new housing. Lower lending rates can also increase in investment spending by businesses. Investment is spending that increases Australia's capacity to produce goods and services say capital goods like new equipment, buildings, or even services like research and development. This is because the returns from spending on these goods and services in the form of higher production, revenue, or profits for the business is now more likely to be greater than the cost of borrowing the money to spend on them. This will have a more direct effect on businesses that fund their investment spending by borrowing money rather than by using money provided by the owners or shareholders in a business. So to summarise, the savings and investment channel of monetary policy can increase aggregate demand by influencing consumption, new housing investment, and also business investment. The next channel is called the cash flow channel. Interest rates determine the cost of borrowing and the reward for saving, so they affect both the cash that borrowers pay as interest on their borrowings and the cash that savers receive as interest on their savings. For example, lower lending rates reduce the interest repayments households and businesses must make on their loans, and this increases the disposable income, or what we call cash flow, they have available to spend on goods and services. In our aggregate demand equation, this can increase consumption and investment. The cash flow channel is stronger for certain types of borrowers. Borrowers with variable rate loans can have their interest rate loan repayments, and therefore available cash flows adjust quite quickly following changes to monetary policy. In contrast, borrowers with fixed rate loans will have to wait until the fixed term of their loan expires before their lending rate and repayments can change. 
In addition, some borrowers can't spend as much as they would like to on goods and services because they need to make sure that they can meet their loan repayments. For these types of borrowers, if they had more income available, say because their loan repayments were lower, they would likely spend it today rather than saving it to spend at some point in the future. So for many borrowers, lower lending rates leads to more consumption or investment. However, at the same time, lower deposit rates also reduce the amount of income that households and businesses get from their cash on deposit at the bank. If they rely on this income to pay for goods and services, they may have to reduce their spending in response to lower deposit rates, lowering their consumption and investment. As you can see from the diagram, these two effects work in opposite directions. But across the whole economy, the effect of lower lending rates is larger than the effect of lower deposit rates. Why is this? Well, the first reason is that collectively, Australian households have borrowed more money than they have saved into assets that pay interest, such as deposits. The second reason is that borrowers are more sensitive to changes in interest rates than savers, because the size of their loan repayments are more likely to constrain their spending habits. So although lower interest rates affect different decision makers in the economy differently, in total, the cash flow channel is expected to result in higher consumption and investment spending. The third channel we're going to discuss is called the asset prices and wealth channel. Asset prices and the wealth held by households and businesses affects how easily they can borrow money and also how confident they are to spend it. In general, lower interest rates tends to support higher prices for some assets. One reason for this is that lower interest rates increase the future benefit provided by these assets relative to before. I discuss why this is in a very short related video called Asset Prices and Interest Rates. A link is in the description. Higher asset prices then flow through to higher wealth. Wealth measures the value of everything that someone owns, their assets, minus the value of what they owe to others, their liabilities. So if asset prices increase, then wealth tends to increase as well. This channel can increase aggregate demand by a higher consumption, business investment, and investment in new housing. So how does the asset prices and wealth channel work? Two ways. For one, higher asset prices increase the capacity of households and businesses to borrow money to consume and invest. A lot of borrowing is secured, meaning assets of equal value are pledged by the borrower to the lender to secure the loan. This is done so the lender can recover their money if the loan is not repaid. For example, when someone borrows to buy a house, they much must pledge the house as security to access the loan. This is called a mortgage on the house. In addition, higher wealth may increase the confidence of households and businesses to consume and invest. Both of these factors may lead households to increase their spending on consumption or housing, which would support new housing investment, and businesses to increase their investment. The final channel we will discuss is the exchange rate channel. The exchange rate has an important influence on aggregate demand in Australia because we trade and invest a lot with other countries. My colleague Gabby presents a series of videos on the exchange rates, which I recommend you watch. All else being equal, lower interest rates in Australia relative to interest rates in other countries, something called the interest rate differential, leads to a depreciation in the value of the Australian dollar. Gabby discusses the interest rate differential and how it affects the value, the value of the Australian dollar in more detail in our Drivers of the Australian Dollar video. A depreciation in the Australian dollar makes our exports cheaper for foreigners and makes imports more expensive for Australians. This increases the quantity of exports purchased by foreigners and decreases the quantity of imports purchased by Australians. More exports and fewer imports boosts aggregate demand. Higher import prices also increases CPI inflation, since some of the goods and services in the consumer price basket are imported. Gabby discusses how the exchange rate affects the Australian economy in more detail in our video on the topic. So that's all we're going to cover in this video. Remember, lower interest rates tend to increase aggregate demand, and this works through four channels. In the next video, we'll look at how this flows through to some other indicators of economic performance and discuss some other important considerations for monetary policy transmission. See you next time.